we thank our lord for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity to share his wonderful words of life uh, so uh, today we are going to see one uh, small lesson that is from the book of revelation uh, chapter 4 uh, let us read revelation chapter 4 verses uh, 2 to 4 uh, brother joel joel brother can you read brother okay brother To and for brother. Yeah, brother, please. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Very good, brother. So here we see about a vision where John was taken to heaven in spirit. And it's a vision. And uh, he saw around the throne, there were 24, uh, you see, seats. And uh, 24 elders uh, were clothed in white robe, having their golden crowns on the head and sitting on the throne. Now, who is this 24 elders? Today we are going to see who is this 24 elders. Generally, you see, regarding these 24 elders, there is a belief that these 24 elders are 12 ancient worthies like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Job, Daniel. So, these are 12 ancient worthies and the other 12 are the 12 apostles. But, uh, can we accept uh, this uh, uh, interpretation if you see? No. Why? Because uh, the Bible clearly says that none of the ancient worthies have received the reward. It is only after the completion of the church that they are going to receive the reward. And uh, will they ever be given heavenly salvation? No. They never will be gotten. They can never be given the you see, heavenly salvation. Okay. Then what about the 12 apostles? It can neither be the 12 apostles. Why? Because the church, the overcoming church, uh, is promised uh, the prize to sit on the throne. And it is the uh, apostles who have first achieved uh, this uh, throne, uh, you see, this uh, special prize to sit uh, on the throne, uh, you see, along with Christ. So they are going to sit on the same throne, not on the thrones or the seat, which is, uh, you see, around the throne. Let us read Revelation 3.21. Mm, Romy's sister, can you read Revelation 3.21? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and am set down with my father in his throne. Very good. So him that overcometh you see, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, not around the throne, other seats. No, it is the same throne. Even as Jesus has overcome and sat on the same throne. Hence, this uh, 24 elders can't be 12 apostles. It can neither be the ancient worthies also. Because, you see, John 3.13, Jesus clearly said, no man has ascended to heaven. So, if none of the ancient worthies uh, ascended to heaven, then how can be they sitting on the throne? And moreover, when will the resurrection take place? When will the dead rise come back to life? Who can tell me? When will the dead come back to life? Tell me, when will the resurrection of the dead happen? There's nobody knows. Huh? Romy sister, Munna sister, Joel brother. Amar brother, when will the resurrection of the dead happen? 1,000 years. Very good brother. At Jesus' second coming, 1,000 years. First Thessalonians 4.16 tells the same thing. So, and before that one, how can they be resurrected and go and sit uh, on the throne? Isn't it? Therefore, this can neither be the ancient worthies nor the church. Okay. Then, who are these? How do we identify? For the Bible, Bible is its own dictionary. 
if you need to find out any answer for questions from the Bible, we need to search from the Bible. So, the clue is given in Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 4. Let us read Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 4. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. Okay, That's continue, with it. continue. Huh? And one of the elders said unto me, Wait not, Behold, line of the tribe of Judah, Judah, the root of David, root of David, and had privi privileged to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven year eyes, which are the seven spirit of God sent okay. forth into uh, all the earth. Okay. Thank you, brother. Good. So here, John is shown a vision of our Heavenly Father sitting on the throne. And in his right hand, he's having a scroll sealed with seven seals. So seven in the Bible means complete number the scroll is the word of God. The word of God is completely sealed and no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read and understand it. John began to weep. Then immediately an elder comes and encourages John saying, weep not. He said, don't cry. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah he is found worthy. You see, he is found worthy to open the scrolls. And uh, read uh, the things uh, that are therein. That means uh, here the elder did not uh, speak his own words. Uh, but he quoted a prophecy from the Old Testament. He never said that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is overcome. The of the one, he clearly said that, you see, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome. Oh, should I should have mentioned the lion of the tribe of Judah. So... Actually, the elder is quoting a prophecy. Now, which is this prophecy? Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Uh, Munna, sister, can you read, sister? Genesis 49, 9 and 10, sister. Judah is a lion's word from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up, he is stopped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not uh, depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Silo come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Very good. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You see, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. You see, so here an elder is quoting the same prophecy from this Old Testament. Where Jesus is compared to a lion, you see, and says, Behold, the prophecy that is mentioned in Genesis 49, 9 and 10, that is being fulfilled. You see, huh? the scepter shall not depart from Judah, but it shall be given to him. You see, so who is this Shiloh? Shiloh means Prince of Peace. So unto Jesus will be given the authority to rule, uh, you see. So here we get a clue that this prophecy is the elder, not the prophet or the elder. Remember, prophets are not the elder, but the prophecies are the elders. Now, why is this compared to elders? You see, 
because uh, you see elder means mm. senior very prominent person very elder person you see that means uh, these are the important prophecies in the bible you see so very very important prophecy in the bible it is around the throne of god means something related to god's throne so what do you mean by throne in the bible kingship kingdom rulership these prophecies are something related to god's kingdom you see so hence it is compared to elders now let us see what bible is com actually composed of what is the theme of the bible acts 3:21 uh, romi sister can you read acts 3:21 sister in the heaven must receive when the heaven whom the heaven must receive until the times of the uh, rest, restitution of all things which god hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began ah uh, very good sister see here the bible is speaking about uh, you see huh what the bible is actually composed of uh, times of restitution of all things this is what god has spoken through the mouth of all his holy prophets all the holy prophets have spoken about this one day but you see huh all the old, old prophets in the old testament have spoken about what uh, restoration of all things when will all things be restored in christ kingdom so it is all spoken about christ and hence uh, the prophecies are very important uh, you see they are wearing white robe white means what you see white means we know truth purity you see so yeah, the truthfulness of the prophecies that definitely they will be fulfilled you see and they were sitting on the throne means what they were waiting for the fulfillment so once they stood and uh, cast the crown before uh, cast the crown before god means uh, the prophecies are fulfilled whenever the prophecies are fulfilled it brings glory to god it brings honor to god sitting represents the waiting for his fulfillment you see therefore dear brethren in uh, revelation 5th chapter so as soon as uh, this uh, elder came and told uh, the old tribe of judah immediately he cast his crown and uh, you see fell down before god that means bring home is to god so let us see what are these 24 prophecies okay the first prophecy given in the bible is jude verse 14 jude verse 14 amr brother can you read brother verse 14 brother jude jude 14 jude 14 and you know you know also also the seven from adam see of this saying behold the lord cometh with 10000 of his sent thank you brother see enoch the first prophet the seventh man from adam itself was the first prophet and he prophesied a very important thing what did he prophesy did he speak about jesus first advent no he spoke about jesus second advent you see he speak of about jesus second advent where jesus is going to come with a church to just the world that is the time is god's kingdom is going to be established this is the first prophecy the second prophecy we already read genesis 49:9 and 10 you see so jesus is the lion of the tribe of judah okay the third prophecy is given to us in deuteronomy 18 chapter verse 15 Uh, Muna sister, can you read Deuteronomy eighteen fifteen, sister? The Lord thy uh, God will rise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him he shall hear God. Very good. The Lord thy God will rise a prophet like unto me, midst of thee. You see. So Moses is telling that God will raise one more prophet like unto me from the brethren. Who is this prophet? This prophet, dear brethren, is the uh, not somebody else, an individual man, but this prophet is the anti-typical Moses. Uh, 
the church and Jesus Christ, the head and the body. Remember the class of the seed of the serpent. You see, we are the body members of Jesus Christ and Jesus is the head. You see, therefore, dear brethren, you see, it is speaking about Jesus and the church, how they will be raised and the whole world has to obey them in his kingdom. Okay. The fourth prophecy, 2 Samuel 7.13. Second uh, Samuel 7.13. Uh, Romister, can you read? He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Mm. You see, he shall build a house for my name. You see? And I will establish his throne for ever. You see? That means this is speaking about uh, Jesus, uh, where uh, Jesus is going to, you see, huh? build a house, the antitypical house. Uh, again, it is here the Christ head in the body. You see how the church will be rebuilt. Uh, you see, along with Christ, uh, you see, the antitypical temple where God is going to come and rest. Uh, you see, dear brethren, and uh, he will establish uh, the throne of his kingdom forever. Christ's kingdom shall be for ever and ever. Okay. The fourth prophecy. Now, fifth one, Job 19, chapter 25 to 26. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Job 19, 25 to 26? Okay, brother. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Mm. You see, though my skin is totally destroyed, yet uh, I shall see God in my own flesh. You see, dear brethren, you see, here again it is speaking about the resurrection that is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. You see, when the resurrection is going to happen for everybody, dear brethren, all the dead will come back to life. You see, and uh, what will happen now? You see, they will get a new body. You see, the old body will be, will be there. It will be totally uh, degraded, but God will give a new body. So, in the resurrection, everybody should be given a new body. Okay. Now, sixth prophecy, Psalms 30, verse 5. Uh, Munna, sister, can you read Psalms 30, verse 5, sister? Okay, brother. For his anger endureth but a moment in his favor is life. Weeping my endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Aha, uh -huh. you see, his anger endured for a moment, but in his favor is life. God's anger, you see, is only for 6,000 years. But uh, Christ is going to return, the whole world will be blessed. It is going to be favor, uh, favor, favor. You see, and that night, uh, this sickness, sin, sin, sorrow is compared to a night. Uh, because night is very fast. You see, we sleep and wake up, night is gone. You see, nobody goes knows about the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Christ uh, is the son of righteousness who is going to arise with healing in his wings. You see, when the millennium morning arises upon everybody, joy will be there for everybody. Okay. The seventh prophecy, Proverbs 8, chapter verse 22 and 30. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. <clears throat> the Lord possess me in the beginning of his way before his works of all. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his daily delight, rejoicing always before him. Uh -huh. Here again he's speaking about the Jesus who is the first creation of God, the beginning of God's face. When God decided to create anything, 
the first thing the first one who created was jesus and through jesus everything was created therefore we see in the bible jesus is called as the alpha and the omega and the beginning and end of the creation daily was his delight sir uh, rejoicing always uh, in god's presence to everyone and therefore this is speaking about jesus sir uh. okay next prophecy is isaiah 35 8 to 10 uh, isaiah 35 8 to 10 uh, gopal brother can you read brother isaiah 35 8 to 10 and an highway shall be there and a way a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men though fools shall not err therein ah no highway shall be... shall be there which is this highway we have studied about the class about the three ways remember you see ma huh? the broad way all the men can are walking it because of uh, sin of adam but there is a narrow way which escapes out of this uh, huh? you see which way this broad way the narrow way which uh, goes to uh, you see huh? heavenly salvation but uh, are all walking on this narrow way no only few people find it but what of the rest of mankind uh, when will they be saved is there no way for them yes there is a way that way is called as highway and that will be opened in christ kingdom it says though fool shall not make a mistake that means even a fool who doesn't believe in god even he shall not deny god in christ kingdom but he shall accept it it will be so clear then continue brother ha huh? no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there huh? and ransom no lion the lord shall be there it seems what is this lion who is our adversary the devil the devil is compared to a lion in christ kingdom this symbol lion of satan will won't be there at all but uh, you see literal lion will be there it will be eating straw spirit those verses but uh, in christ kingdom satan will be bound for a thousand years then continue brother huh? and the ransom of the lord shall return and come to him with songs and everlasting joy and gladness and sorrow and sing shall flee away very good brother see huh? the redeem shall return they shall be crowned with everlasting joy you see as a man goes to death uh, so much of sorrow but one people come in the resurrection so much of joy gladness that is going to happen in christ kingdom the highway of holiness okay the next prophecy jeremiah 31st chapter 29 and 30 Ah, uh, Romans sister, can you read Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-first chapter, twenty-nine, thirty, sister? Twenty-nine and thirty. In those days, they shall say no more. the fa- fathers have eaten a sour sour grapes and the great and the children's teeth are set on edge but everyone shall die for his own iniquity every man that eateth the sour grape his teeth shall be the set on edge very good sir see he clearly says the- that uh, you see what uh, does he say no man uh, shall die for other sin you see ha huh? it shall be no more told in those days uh, you see that uh, father say it and the so grave children's teeth are set on edge who is father father adam ate the uh, forbidden fruit just because he ate uh, the sin came upon everybody death came upon everybody everybody's teeth were set on the edge uh, you see dear brethren but in christ kingdom it won't be like that each and every person will be judged individually for their sin each and every person will die for his own sins not for the sins of others okay next prophecy you see uh, is ezekiel 21st chapter 26 and 27 uh, amar brother can you read ezekiel 21 26 to 27 brother Hello. 
Thus said the Lord God, remove the uh, riding and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Ex exalt him that is low and uh, abas him that in high. I will, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and I it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. Very good, brother. You see. This prophecy was spoken against Zedekiah, the last king of Israel, where God told to remove his crown, that means kingship. You see, and uh, it shall not be the same, it seems, but uh, this crown will again be restored to whom? It says, it will be given to him whose right it is. That means it will be given to Jesus at the second coming. Kingdom of God will be established in Israel through Jesus. He will get back the crown, the royal diadem. Okay, 11th prophecy, Daniel 12, 12. Daniel 12, chapter 12, verse. Uh, Muna Sitar, can you read Daniel 12, 12? Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Very good. Uh, you see, blessed is he that uh, waiteth and cometh till thousand three thirty five days. Now, what is this one? We have studied this prophecy about Jesus' second coming. 1,335 days and in 1874, that is the year where Jesus returned back to the earth atmosphere. So this is speaking about Jesus' second coming. When his kingdom shall be established on earth. Okay, the 12th prophecy, Osea, 7 chapter 8 and 11. Osea, 7 chapter 8 and 11. Gopal brother, can you read? Ephraim. He hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is the cake not on. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. Ah, Ephraim hath mixed himself among the people. Mixed himself among the people means what? You see, the Abhidran, Ephraim. You see, people, worldly people. This is picking up the great multitude. You see, yeah, remember Revelation 7 chapter, the wearing white robe standing before the throne. There also again, elder comes and quotes the same prophecy. You see, so Ephraim has mixed with the world. Here a little, there a little. You see, they are in the world, they are in the God also. No man can serve two masters. It is a cake that is not turned. Roti, imagine, if it is baked on one side, can we eat it? No, we can't eat one side baked roti, you see. Therefore, it is 50-50. They are neither this way, neither that way. They are very in between. You see, dear brethren. So, that can't be possible. We need to be in the Lord or out of the Lord. Therefore, it says, Ephraim is a silly dow. Dow means what? Purity. But silly means what? No wisdom. You see, foolish virgins. You see, without heart, without understanding, they go to the Egypt. They go to the world. You see, that is the character of Great multitude. Okay. Now, 13th prophecy. Joel 2nd chapter 28 and 29. Uh, Munna Sitra, can you read it, sir? Okay, brother. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Mm. Here God says that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. When in Christ's kingdom, is it poured upon all flesh? No, it is poured only upon whom? Devatran. It is now poured only upon the servants. But uh, in Christ's kingdom, what will happen? It will be brought upon all flesh. Then they shall be God's children. They shall also see and understand the scriptures. So the whole world is waiting for the pouring of the God's Holy Spirit. Okay. The fourteenth, very, very important prophecy. Amos 9 chapter 13 and uh, 14. Amos 9 chapter 
13 and 14. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, that the plow, plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall sweet wine, and all the hills shall mate, and I will bring again the capi, capi, capability of people of Israel. They shall build the west city, cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyard and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them very good so here you see it clearly says you see israel shall be regathered they shall inhabit and build you see that means what dear brethren when israel is again regathered from the captivity israel shall be planted and uh, they shall make gardens you see they shall build the waste cities this one we already studied uh, in the israel class so during these days what will what else will happen it says uh, the plowman shall overtake the reaper who is the plowman we know the plowman is the one who plows the ground which is very hard and makes it soft to receive the seed this represents the great time of trouble in the bible now, the, you see, the reaper means what? One is doing the harvest. You see, the harvest, harvest, we see the people are listening to the truth and living out of Babylon, coming to the truth. The harvest work is going on. But as the harvest work is going on, simultaneously, you see, the plowing work is going on. That means the great time of trouble has already arrived. Therefore, we see in the world, a lot of commotion, Sorrow, trouble, disturbance all over. Why? Because we are living in the great time of trouble. In this trouble only, the harvest is taking place. That's it what is speaks about the work in the kingdom. Okay, 15 prophecy, Obadiah 21. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Obadiah 21? Okay, Romister, can you read Obadiah 21? Amar brother or Romister? And Shever shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. The kingdom shall be the Lord's. When? You see, when Shever shall come upon Mount Zion, to judge Mount of Isau. Isau means who sold his birthright for a little bit of food. This represents the Babylon. You see, Saviors means like and 44,000. They shall come along with Jesus to judge Babylon. When? When will this happen? When the kingdom is the Lord's. This is all work that is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. Okay, 16 prophecy. Jonah 4th chapter, verse 10 and 11. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the God, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which come up in a night, and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. Very good, brother. So here, God is actually rebuking Jonah for being angry because God uh, turned away from destruction of Nineveh, blessed it, uh, repented. You see, why? Because Nineveh turned to God. He was very angry. He wanted them to be destroyed. And God gives a small example, you see, and corrects him. You see, Similarly, God is having mercy upon the blind people of this whole world. You see, dear brethren, his eye is merciful. He never wants them to be destroyed. He says they can't discern the difference between the left and the right hand. Dear brethren, you see, hence, 
this is speaking uh, about Christ's kingdom, the work which Christ is going to do in his kingdom. Show mercy for all the people who repent and come back to God. Okay. 17 prophecy. Mika, 4 chapter 1 to 3. Uh, Muna, sister, can you read? Okay, brother. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it, and many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path, for the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and uh, and he shall judge among many people, and rebuke a strong nation of her off, and they shall beat their sword into plowshare, and their spear into burning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Okay, neither shall they learn war anymore. In Christ's kingdom, there shall be no more war at all. You see, they shall not lift up a sword against nation. So no far, no war, no fighting in Christ's kingdom. But what all investment today they are doing for arms, ammunition, you see, this will be diverted and invested in where? You see, in agriculture. That's what it says. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, means investment, divert of investment. But then, you see, imagine today how much of uh, crores, crores, millions of dollars have been spent on, uh, you see, warfare. Ukraine, Russia war, more than one and a half year. You see, the war is still going on. You see, they could have built an entire new Ukraine. So much of fund has been spent. Even, you see, huh? Israel, Gaza, so much of war. Oh, dear brethren, how much of amount is being spent on war? But in Christ's kingdom, when all these things shall be diverted uh, towards agriculture, the earth will yield good increase. Mankind will get good food. Uh, okay. Now, 18 prophecy, Nahum 115. Nahum, Nahum 115. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Nahum 115? Okay, brother. Behold upon the mountain the feet of him that uh, writeth good tidings, the publicist uh, speaks, or Judah, keep thy uh, solemn feet, perform thy ways for the wicked shall no more pass through the through the he is utterly cut off. Aha, uh -huh. behold upon the mountain, the feet of him, the feet of Jesus, the feetless saints. We are the feetless saints. Sir. Mountain means what kingdom? In the, we are living in the kingdom. We are the feetless saints uh, who are doing what? Uh? Huh? proclaiming the good tidings of great joy, we shall be to all people the peace uh, that is going to shortly come in Christ's kingdom. This is the work of the church in his kingdom. Okay. A 19 prophecy. Habakkuk 2.14. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Habakkuk 2.14 brother? The earth will be a field with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the Waters fill the sea. Ah, as the water is filled with, you see, as the sea is filled with water, you see, similarly, God's knowledge shall be filled in Christ's kingdom. Imagine there is no place in the river or a sea, there is no water at all. Deep there. Wherever you go, so deep you go, you see, there is water. Similarly, in Christ's kingdom, wherever you go, knowledge of the Lord shall be there. Nobody shall say, I don't know the Lord. Everybody shall know the Lord of the Ren. This is 19 prophecy. The 20th one. Zephaniah 3rd chapter 8 to 9. Uh, Joel brother, can you read Zephaniah 3rd chapter 8 to 9? Okay, brother. Therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until 
the day that I rise up to the prey for my determination is to gather the nation that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger for the all earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Ah, you see, what will God do? God will pour out uh, his uh, anger in a great time of trouble, you see, and uh, break the language of selfishness in this world. Then what will God do? He shall turn a new language. What is that language? That language is the language of love, affection, you see, happiness, joy, sharing. You see, then everybody shall uh, love the Lord with one concept, with one understanding, with one mind, dear brother. And so this is going to happen, you see, in Christ's kingdom. Therefore, now we can see the great amount of trouble is uh, reaching the peak. Why? It is preparing the hearts of the man to receive uh, this uh, it's a language of love in Christ's kingdom. Okay. Now, 21st prophecy. Haggai, 2nd chapter, 6 to 7. Uh, Munna Sister, can you read? For thus said the Lord of hosts, at once it is a little while, and I will save the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will save all the nation and the desire desire of all nations shall come and I will fill he, this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, God shall shake all nations. You see, already we can see the shaking. America is shaken. Iran is shaken. You see, uh, Russia is shaken. Ukraine is shaken. All nations. Take any nation. Everywhere there is trouble, trouble, trouble. Breaking news. Shaking is already happening. Uh, you see, then what will happen? Uh, then all the nations will desire peace. Then God will give them peace. Okay. 22nd prophecy. Zechariah 6 chapter 12 to 13. Zechariah 6 chapter 12 to 13. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Okay, brother. And speak, speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is Branch, the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord, even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the, bear the glory of the and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and is be preached upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Aha! Uh -huh. Behold a man. His name should be called Branch. Who is this root and branch of David? Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, dear brethren, he shall grow and he shall build the temple of the Lord. You see, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne. He shall be a priest upon his throne. Remember Melchizedek? He was a king as well as a priest sitting upon the throne. Similarly, dear brethren, Jesus, at his return, is going to be a priest, a king, a judge. He's going to do all this activity along with the church. Hence, this 22nd prophecy. Okay. 23rd prophecy, Malachi 3.17. Uh, Romeo sister, can you read Malachi 3.17? And they shall and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in, in that day when I make up my Dwells, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that 
sir serveth him very good sir you see ha huh? in the day when lord shall make up his jewels who are his jewels the precious thing the little flock lack and 44000 and these little flock shall be spared from the great time of trouble how as a man spared his own son similarly god is going to spare this just dear brethren therefore dear brethren this is speaking about the lord shiva the like and 44000 who shall be gathered you see at uh, christ uh, ruling okay the last prophecy is told by john the baptist john 129 amar brother can you read john 129 brother in the next day john said Jesus coming unto him and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God, uh, which taken away the sin of the world." You see, this is a prophecy where you see John the Baptist told Jesus is the Lamb of God who taken away the sins of the whole world. Dear brethren, the ransom was paid by Jesus. The whole world sin. Where uh, abolished, uh, you see, granted the release from the prison house of death, uh, dear brethren, the whole world will be resurrected in Christ's kingdom. So these are the dear brethren, the twenty-four prophecies, uh, not the prophets. Uh, so once, once uh, these prophecies are fulfilled, it brings glory and homage uh, and uh, praise to God. Okay. So hope you all understood. I'll be sharing the notes. Uh, any doubts? Any questions? If you are, you can definitely ask me.